Hello everyone, in today's video I'll be showing you how to build my very compact automatic farm. I like to call it the closet farm. And this is, like I said, completely automatic, also sometimes called set and forget farms. So you build it and then all you ever have to do is pick up some food out of the chest. Otherwise you never have to manage it in any way. So the first thing we'll need to build this farm is a chest, which is where all our food will drain into. We'll need plenty of hoppers. Uh, we'll need some podzol. We'll need regular dirt and sand. We'll need plenty of water. And we'll need some kind of walls. For this one I'll be using quartz. And finally you'll need some kind of lighting. I'm going to be using sea lanterns for this. Oh, and you'll also need some kind of hoe to make the fertilized dirt. So let's start by putting our chest down and putting just a few hoppers going in every direction, draining into that chest. We'll need to add more later. So, and then on one side of the chest, if it's a double wide chest, build a U shape of pods all just like this. So it's, it's only one block uh, parallel with the chest, if that makes sense. And then beneath the podzol, which is closest to the chest, put a thing of water. So underneath this podzol right there, there's some water. And then put the sand next to the water, and then four things of dirt next to the sand. And then we'll need to put this wall in behind it. I'll fast forward through that. But before I fast forward, we'll finish connecting these hoppers here. So the hoppers should just run the length of the whole farm. So, you know, that's, uh, what, like five in each direction, roughly? Anyway, just the length of the whole farm. So I'm just fast forwarding through this here while I build this, and this is just to catch all the items that get pushed so they don't get, you know, launched into your room or whatever. And the next thing you need to do is get glass panes, not glass blocks. And the reason you do that is because glass panes will catch the items, but it won't block the hoppers. So these hoppers will still suck up items, and yet the items won't just go flying into your room. So that saves you one whole block of space, because most designs you would need to have one thing to catch the items and another thing, you know, of hoppers. So it's a win-win scenario using panes rather than some other type of block. So the next thing we'll need to do is hoe some dirt to make the... Oops, too far from water, but that's fine. So put the, get all our crops we need. Get some mushrooms, some sugarcane, pumpkin, and melon seeds. So starting over here by the podzol, you want to place one of each type of mushroom on the high ground. And that, that's because this high ground won't be flooded with water later. If it was me, I'd do them both brown mushrooms because I only use mushrooms for brewing. But, you know, maybe you like mushroom stew, whatever. How Do it however you want to. But the mushrooms go on the high ground, and the mushrooms on the low ground get washed away. And then make some fertilized dirt, and on each extreme here, make one of those a, mush or one of those a melon plant and one of those a pumpkin plant. The next thing we'll do is plant our pistons. So that didn't work. I'll have to go on the other side. So put one piston facing down, just like that, and that can be anywhere on the podzol area, but I'm just going to put it in this area closer to the chest. Put one on the second, or the block above the sugarcane plant, because you don't want to destroy the primary plant. And then put two more pistons in between the melons, just like I did there. And just to quickly go back over that, because it was kind of fast, you have one facing down here, near the mushrooms. And then you have one over here, right above the sugarcane right there and then you have two over here in between the melon plant and the pumpkin plant so not pushing the actual plants just pushing the area in between the two so the next thing we have to do is do our redstone first place a block with a torch on it keeping the one near the mushrooms always on the piston facing down should be kept on by a torch the rest of these just place a block with redstone on top of it directly next to them so that when that line is powered, they get powered. It doesn't matter how you set it up, as long as whenever the redstone line gets powered, the piston near the mushrooms gets turned off, and the rest of the pistons get turned on. That's what's important. You can set it up however you like. So the next thing, we, uh, we'll test it out first, just so you guys can kind of see how it works. We'll build the sugar cane up. Put the pumpkin and the melon in the right area. There we go. And uh, we didn't set the mushroom farm up yet, so... So you see when we push that, all of them, except this one, which somehow went through glass, end up in this chest here. It works pretty well. As you can see, it doesn't collect every single item, but it'll be running as long as you're in this area, you know, 24 hours of the Minecraft day. So it will collect plenty of food for you. 
So the next thing we have to do is set up the redstone signal to automatically make this harvest. And you could use a hopper clock if you like hopper clocks, there's nothing wrong with that. But it would actually be smaller if we use my once per day signal switch. So what this does is it allows a signal to only go through either once or twice per day depending on how you define day. Basically the signal, if you know how um, sun or daylight sensors work, it's only strong enough part of the day to pass through and then as soon as it gets just a little stronger this repeater in the side cuts it off. So I have a, I'll put an annotation to the video which explains it in detail but basically if you build it just like it looks on screen here you can take my word that it's gonna work. So every complete Minecraft day cycle, you know the, the Minecraft equivalent of 24 hours, a signal will only go through twice and it'll be a fairly short signal. The day will progress and then it'll end. So most of the time your crops will be able to grow but for part of the day they will be harvested. Next we have to set up the mushroom farm and all that we have to do, which we haven't already done, is to put the area for water. So just make a little bucket shaped area just like this next to that uh, downward facing piston and put a thing of water there. It's that simple. So next I'll put some mushrooms in there so we can actually test it. Where are the mushrooms? I'll put all the crops actually so we can test the whole thing again. So I'll put that there, that there. Build our sugar cane up. Put our mushrooms down. And you guys can see how this whole thing works. And I'll seal off the top too. I'll fast forward through that. Oh and one thing I forgot to mention earlier, you should also put a chicken down there. And that chicken will lay eggs, and those eggs will get collected by the hoppers, too. I forgot to do that in this video, to be honest. I just forgot, even though I did it in the demonstration. So now we have two farms, which look just like each other. And we'll go and remove this signal in the back here. So this works exactly like how it would work during the beginning part of the day. We see that part of the area floods with water, and the rest of them get pushed out by the pistons. And they all get collected into this chest here. So that's working perfectly. Like I said, it might not collect all of them every time but it'll collect enough that you'll build up plenty. So that's the end of this tutorial. Please leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for new tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. I hope this is useful, and may you never go hungry in Minecraft again. Thank you for watching.